Hi guys, welcome back to Feathers and Fur. So today marks the first day of Mental Health Week and Olivia and I are both big advocates of talking about our mental health. We talk to each other, we talk to our friends, we talk to our family um, and so we decided to talk to you. <laughs> We're very honest, we like to share things, we might overshare a little bit but for us, you know, people say to us all the time that we have the most amazing jobs, that we have the most amazing life. I mean, look at my life. I'm, I get to be outside in the beautiful countryside every single day, flying my beautiful birds. Um, and we just want to be honest because we too suffer from mental health. So um, I'm going to talk about my bit and then I'm going to pass it over to Olivia who's going to talk to you as well. I'll try and keep me nice and quick because I think Olivia's um, bits are really interesting. Um, but for me, my mental health issue was depression and I suffered from depression for many, many years whilst having this business. Now don't get me wrong, I love my business, I love my customers, I love what I do um, and that was actually one of the things that I really found the hardest bit to deal with you know I can under well I used to be able to think well I can understand if you've got a really awful job and you're <coughs> going, sorry, I'm choking on a bug, going crazy, working so many hours, never getting to see your family, uh, maybe having to work in the city and commute hours and hours every day, but I've got this amazing life and how can I be suffering from depression? But you can and that's it, it's, it's, not, it's not discriminatory, it doesn't pick who thinks they've got a better life or not, depression can affect everybody. And so for years I struggled with my depression and um, I'm pleased to say that I know, I feel, I know, I feel in myself, my core that I'm through it. Um, I didn't take medication, I, I didn't actually get on with the medication at all. I do enjoy having feelings and, and I did find for me personally the medication really dulled everything that I felt. Um, but I did start to be very aware of things that I could do that helped my mental health. So obviously, you know, the kind of common things are getting outside and I was often very aware that I was outside all the time. I work outside every day, but I never actually felt like I was outside. You know, I was working, I was doing something. And so for me, I started to just really be very aware that I was outside. It sounds really crazy, doesn't it? But being, going out, to go outside, to, to actually go and walk my dogs and be in the moment whilst I was walking my dogs was a big thing for me. My dogs really uh, were a major part of my recovery and my sort of daily life. Um, you probably can't tell if I try and spin around. That's how crazy they are. There is a water trough just here and my Labradors just climbed in it. You know, they do stupid stuff like that. Just being aware of things like that just make my life smile, make me smile. So being physically aware of being outside was a good thing. Being outside, um, either walking or secondly was exercise. So I'm um, going out for big walks, not just a quick walk around the block with my dogs, going out for big walks into woodlands, um, going running it was a massive help. I actually started climbing a couple of years ago um, um, and I absolutely loved it, just physically moving my body. Um, another part of my depression was that I eat a lot. Um, so I've always got sort of body issues and um, exercise helped with that, you know, I can eat chocolate and go for a run. Uh, so I really, I, f I think exercise is a real key core in helping you cope with mental health illnesses. Um, the third thing was staying in touch with people. So this is a huge thing of mine and I was quite shocked uh, recently when I learned that someone was, she was 18 bless her and she had never sent a letter. Uh, for me, that is so important. My family live around the UK and all my friends live around the world. And so sending letters and notes, oh, it's just even a silly postcard, is so important. And it's not just about um, receiving something. To me, you have to remember that everybody's busy in life. So they might not think to send you a letter, but they will if you send it first. So if you want something, you have to put it out there first. So write a little note to your mates, put it in the post. It's so exciting to get that letter in the post. I cannot tell you how excited I get when I see an envelope with one of my friends handwriting and I know that I'm gonna to get to sit down, have a cup of coffee, and I'm gonna dedicate five minutes of my day just to seeing about their life, reading about their life that's not a 
perfect picture on Instagram or it's not that sort of very false Facebook look that they've got it's just truly I got up fed the chickens and I got it doesn't matter what drivel is in it I love it and what I write the drivel going back I absolutely love writing and receiving letters so that's um, one of my key things and then a really good little tip just to do is ladder breathing so I although I know that I'm out of my depression um, I do still sometimes get anxiety um, so just so much to do there's so much to do in a business um, having that to-do list that never ever ends I think the same for everybody isn't it if you've got children or your family that to-do list never ends and sometimes it just feels like I'll never get it and I, I build up and I panic and I, I just can't breathe about it so ladder breathing is breathing in for three seconds holding it for four seconds and breathing out for five seconds or however long you want to do it I quite often do breathing in for four hold for five and out for six and just that breathing really helps calm the world down and so yeah those are my top tips for our, our mental health week go out do some exercise if you've got someone dog borrow a dog um, if you've got your dogs don't just go for a quick walk really be in a walk with them so that you can be outside in nature um, exercising running walking whatever just move your body move your body for five seconds in Rachel Hollis move your body just 30 minutes a day move your body that's what she says <laughs> um, and then being in touch staying in touch with people writing letters um, try to stay away from the email and the text actually have something physical a card a postcard a letter anything just get some nice stationery write it out spend some time don't just add it in whilst you're on your commute actually write a letter um, and then breathing that's that's my top key tips for your mental health awareness week so I'm gonna pass you over to Olivia now um, she's gonna talk and her talking is much better than my talking I'm pretty sure she's much more sensible than I am but for now um, stay safe enjoy being outside where you can and when we can open up we cannot wait to see you we cannot wait to see you all soon take care bye Hi everyone, so as Sadie was saying, it is Mental Health Awareness Week this week and I am a firm believer that um, mental health is something that should be talked about. Um, I hate to say it, but it's a very English attitude of mental health being a big taboo and we should all just um, keep calm and carry on with everything, um, I think is very detrimental. I think it's very important to be able to talk about things like this um, and so you've got to practice what you preach. So today, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how nature um, helps my mental health. Not just because I'm obsessed with being outdoors, um, but because I can genuinely say, hand on heart, that nothing else, I think, has had such a big effect on me and been able to help me come to terms with my mental health as much as nature and just being outside in the open. And don't just take my word for it. There are brilliant books you can read about it, like Chris Packham's um, Fingers in the Sparkle Jar, Joe Harkness' Bird Therapy, and loads of scientific evidence that's now coming out about how good nature is for you, um, even how good soil is for you. It's, it's honestly, it's being proven to be a massive um, influencer on people's mental health. So, a couple of things that help me the most, um, I would say probably one of the things that uh, my mental health issues bring about are panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And I think for me personally, um, that's got to be... <laughs> Gimli's just seen a crow. Normally not very interested in crows. Uh, one of the, um, that's one of the hardest things for me personally um, to deal with, uh, the panic and anxiety attacks. And ever since, you know, day dot, uh, since I literally was an infant so way before I knew anything about nature you know before I knew what a blue tit sounded like or before I saw my first badger um, way before any of that being outside just simply just being outside was the biggest help to me I cannot even stress that enough um, so you know whenever I was struggling I'd be straight outside in my garden um, there's just something about the freedom of being outside. There's no constraints, it's not claustrophobic. You're out there by yourself. You can hear the wind 
um, sit on the grass that is another thing, hence why I'm doing it now. One of my favorite things to do is to feel the cool grass underneath you. It instantly calms you down. Um, just being able to listen to the sounds of the world go by. You know, one of the biggest problems for me when I'm trying to overcome uh, the, the issues that I have is worrying about what people think, which is, you know, it's stupid really, but we all do it. And nature, it's just fantastic because there is no judgment whatsoever. You can sit outside and you know full well that the birds singing above your head, the insects scurrying around on the floor, they do not care what is going on in your life, in your head. They don't care if you're an absolute mess having a panic attack outside. They haven't got a clue. There's no one out there to make you feel bad. There's nothing but peace and calm um, and it just helps me center back onto what's important. Um, as well as sitting on the grass, my other top tip, sounds silly, but watch insects. Insects are fascinating anyway, um, but I'm not saying you need to go out and buy an insect book and learn all about them. That's not what this is about. Just sitting on the ground though and watching all of these busy lives going on around you, it just puts things into perspective. You know, you think there's these massive things that you're dealing with and suddenly everything's so overwhelming. And then you take a look and you realize that life is still going on around you exactly as it was before. There are all these other creatures busying around their lives. You know, at the right time of year, you see all the bees frantically trying to find um, nectar. Uh, you can see small mammals out and about, birds with nesting material, you know? Life is busy for everything else and it's all carrying on regardless um, of whether you're having a bad time or a good time. And for me personally, I find a lot of comfort in that. Um, so just being outside, being able to listen to water is a great thing, being able to listen to the breeze, um, just generally being in touch with the outdoors, you know, rather than sitting in a cooped up room, get out, um, sit up as straight as you can and take really massive breaths pay attention to what you can smell or what you can see. Um, but for me, it's not necessarily about seeing something. You know, if I see something and it makes me um, excited and it fills me with awe and wonder, great, it'll distract me for a little while, which is exactly what, I'm, what I want. But even if I don't, just being outside um, puts it all into perspective. I don't think you have to see anything that's particularly interesting. Um, you just, there's this sense of everything just slows down. Nothing particularly matters out there, outside, you know, it's everything. It just gives your brain a little bit of time to take that step back and just calm itself down. Also for me, going for a walk, going for a walk is a huge, 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 um, distraction, but also, um, but also, when you suffer from lots of uh, mental health issues, um, you could be really high in stress, high in um, anxiety. Uh, now, my adrenal glands are like Ferraris. Uh, you know, it makes me very, very good in um, a kind of emergency situation. Um, but day-to-day -day life, I don't need to be pumping loads of adrenaline around my body. It's not very helpful. Um, and I find the best way to burn off that adrenaline is to go for a walk. So get outside, go for a walk. It can be a stroll, it can be a power walk, um, whatever, feel, whatever you feel helps you the most. Um, but just get moving, get burning off um, those stress hormones uh, and take in the bird song and try and up those, those, um, that serotonin and dopamine get the get the good hormones flowing um, now <laughs> I'm obviously sat here with Gimli obviously I'm not suggesting to everyone go out and buy a snowy owl to make yourself feel better um, but look at his handsome face he I cannot not smile when I'm with Gimli uh, and for me taking responsibility for something else is um, <laughs> has always been a massive help to me. So I've always had animals. I'm not saying go out and get animals. If you don't want animals, it can be a plant. Uh, you know, grow some tomatoes, grow some herbs. Anything that you have to nurture and look after will massively distract from your own problems. And also, you know, for me being a big sister, um, she might not know this, but being that big sister for her, if I'm in a situation that makes me feel uncomfortable, 
I just try and think that actually, you know, I'm in charge of looking after her. I need to make sure I'm okay so that I can make sure she's okay. So having that something that makes you think, no, I've got to put, I've got to pull myself together because I have to do this to help someone else or something else. Um, that massively, massively helps me. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple of ideas um, of things for you guys to go and do if you're struggling. Um, obviously, most people are gonna be struggling at the moment. This is a really tricky situation we're in. Don't be afraid to speak out. You know, that's the main thing. Just admit it. You know, I, I got a lot of kind of ne quite negative and hurtful comments uh, when I was younger. And then I left school I grew up and I realized no one cares. Um, <laughs> no one actually really cares uh, about what's going on in my head. Um, it's what you think about yourself and how you deal with it that matters. And to be perfectly honest with you, I, can, I really, really struggle to think of anybody in my life that has not struggled with their mental health at some point, whether it's um, a short-term thing because of something that's happened or whether it's something they suffer with, like me, for their whole life and will suffer with for their whole life. Um, so I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone very, very much who are continuing to support us. Obviously, it's a bit tricky at the moment for small businesses, but to everyone who follows us on social media, sends us comments, watches our videos, thank you very much. And uh, for me personally, I want to say thank you. The past few years uh, doing this job has just been amazing. And if you would have said to me a while ago, you know, you're gonna go and do a job that involves you talking to groups of people on a daily basis, um, to be honest, I would have laughed in your face. So thank you to all the fantastic customers and people I have met over the past few years that have made this all um, seem a little less scary and just made it the best fun in the world. Um, so Gimli is just having a whale of a time looking at everything. Clearly very, very distracted by the birds that are flying around at the moment, doing his crazy eyes. Um, but we're gonna say bye to you for now. Um, hopefully we'll get to see you guys all soon. Uh, thank you for watching and stay safe and look after yourselves. Bye.